right there that God is thinking about you. Well, some of us say, well, why would he think about me? I've never done anything great. Well, guess what? He did something great, and now he thinks about you all the time. And in his plans, you know, they remain the same no matter what our circumstances are. Come on, Pastor Larissa used to say this, and my pastor, Pastor Ray out in California used to say this too. He says, God doesn't have a plan B. Come on, he's just got a plan A. And if you mess up plan A, he says, here's plan A. <laughs> Come on. You think that you're so great that you could mess up God. But God is greater than you are. Come on, God's greater than your situation. God is greater than the circumstance. And his plan A remains. Pastor Larissa just said this just a moment ago, that every one of us have calls on our lives. Come on, and giftings on our lives. And you know, in, in Romans chapter 11, verse 29, it says the gift and the call of God are without repentance. Meaning that when God calls somebody, he's not gonna take it away. When God, when God gifts somebody with something, he's not, he's not an Indian giver. He's not, he's not going to take that thing back and say, well, you've been a bad little boy. I'm going to take that from you. He said, you, I still love you. He says, I see the blood of Jesus. I don't see sin. I don't see unrighteousness any longer. He said, I've cast those things as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Well, nobody can prevent God's plans from being fulfilled in our lives. The second part of that verse, he says that I've got plans to prosper you and not to harm you. That word prosper there in the Hebrew is actually the word shalom, which means nothing missing and nothing broken. It means health and prosperity and peace. Come on, he's got plans to prosper you, plans to keep you in health, plans to keep you in prosperity, plans to keep you in peace. No, it's not God's nature to put sickness on us. It's his nature to heal us from sickness. Well, Galatians 3.13 says that curse is everybody who's hung on a tree. He became cursed so that we could have the blessing of Abraham. You know, there's a couple of verses about healing in the Bible, if you haven't noticed, but in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, he says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sin might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Come on, it's a past tense thing. It's not something that you're begging God for. It's not something saying, God, I don't know. I can't do this any longer. You need to do something. God's already done it. Amen. Come on, when, they, when the, 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 the prophet Isaiah prophesied about this verse, he said, by whose stripes you are healed. Yeah. It was a present tense thing. But then when Peter wrote this letter to the church, he said, by whose stripes you were healed. He said, it's done. It's been finished. You've already got your healing. Now receive that healing. God's nature for us now is not to make us poor or to uh, make us fail, but rather for us to be successful and for us to be wealthy. You know, in, in 3 John in verse 2, say, Beloved, I pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul is prospering. So it's not God's nature for us to live in a place of depression. It's not God's nature for us to live in a place of fear, amen? But it's God's nature for us to live in, in peace and, and to live in that shalom of nothing missing and nothing broken. You might think, well, I have peace every once in a while, but when you receive the peace that Jesus has, it's a peace that's, that, that far surpasses your understanding. Prophet Isaiah said that when you uh, uh, keep your focus on him, he'll give you perfect peace. So imagine if peace was a person, peace is peace is what you're getting. <laughs> Come on, y'all hear me this morning. Jesus said this to his disciples. He says, peace I leave with you and my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. And he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Praise the Lord. And the third part of this verse, he says to give you a hope. Come on, some of the world, a lot of the world is walking around hopeless. But we as the church ought not to be walking around hopeless. We have a hope that when we hold on to this hope, come on, he said that you're not gonna be ashamed. You're not gonna be ashamed. The word hope in the Hebrew literally means a cord or as an attachment, an expectancy or an expectation or something that you long for. So what are we longing for? You know, I, I, I encourage you, I don't know what it was, maybe last week, not to give up on your dream. It's about time that we start dreaming again. Yes. 
Come on. That, that when you rejoice, you start to begin to dream again. It's time to start dreaming again. It's time to start uh, uh, thinking about and longing for what God has for you, having a, a, a joyful, confident expectancy. Yes. Remember the last part of this verse says that he would give you a future. Yes. So in the Hebrew, this word means that our, it's our posterity. It means those who come after us. Yes. Come on, it's not just you and about what God has for you in your lifetime. It's about what God has for your kids. It's about what God has for your, your grandkids and your great-grandkids and your great-great-grandkids if you're still around. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, in the Proverbs, it said that a good man leaves an inheritance. Come on, for his grandchildren or for his children's children, which are his grandchildren. So this future, uh, uh, God has a definite future for us, but wrapped up, wrapped up in that future is our children. It's their children and it's generations to come. I'll go over to Ephesians chapter 2. You all doing all right? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. He said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. Now we just saw that God had plans for us. God has a future for us. He's thinking thoughts towards us. And here the apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus and says, listen, God has things he, uh, that, that he has created and prepared before you were even anything. Come on, before you were nothing <laughs> or when you were nothing, he has already prepared something for you in, in this time. In the Amplified Bible it says, we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship were recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we, we may do those good works which God predestined or planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them. And then he says that when we're walking in them, it says in parentheses, he said, living the good life which he prepared and made ready for us. Aren't you thankful that God has made some things ready for you? Aren't you thankful that God has prepared some things for you? That, that we're his workmanship. I remember teaching one time about this verse. And, you know, if, if, if you've ever done anything where you've actually put your hands to something, or maybe now it's on a computer and you've designed something on a computer, you don't just throw that thing in the trash after you're done with it. You go and you show everybody, look what I did. Look what I made with my own hands. This was nothing before I started. You know, when a potter is spinning that wheel and he takes a lump of clay and turns it into a beautiful uh, container or a vase or, or a pot or whatever he makes, that's just amazing. Not everybody can just sit there at a potter's wheel and turn that lump of something into something. Most of us, we probably press that pedal too fast and it go flying across the room, right? But they know what kind of pressure to put on the pedal. They know how to use their hands to mold these things. And God knows how to use his hands in order to mold you, to make you exactly the way that he has created you to be. Amen. Come on, there's some things that he's prepared for you that meanwhile, in the molding process, he already sees what the next step is. He says, I need to mold this thing into them just a little bit so that they'll be prepared for that next step. So many verses about how God just uh, 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 has created things. You know, in Genesis, he created the heavens and the earth. He created man. He created the things that fly. He created the things in the sea, right? He created all those things. But in Psalms chapter 139 and verse 13, he says, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Your works are wonderful. And I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. And when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body and all of my days have been ordained for me. They were written in your book before one of them ever came to be. Come on, when all hell is breaking loose against you, you just got to realize that God is the author and he's the finisher. Come on, that what he started in you, he's surely going to complete in you. That it's not going to come to a crash, it's going to come to a flourishing finish. Hallelujah. Now some of these students sitting here today, they probably would have never imagined themselves sitting in these rows today. Some of them when they started this course, come on, they're like, I don't, I'm not really sure about some of these things. 
I remember some of them. <laughs> and, you know, God just gives you the right words to say. You know, they didn't necessarily come to all, all come to me, but a lot of them went to Pastor Larissa and said, you know, I don't know about this and this and this. And she said, oh, I don't worry about it. No big deal. <laughs> and uh, we just let the word work. Come on, we didn't try to convince anybody. We didn't, you know, try to uh, twist anybody's arm. We just tried to, we let the word work. So this is what the word says, and this is what we're going to choose to believe. Amen. Come on, a lot of people today, they have not put a value on the word of God. Right. They've disvalued the, the word of God. They've dishonored the word of God. It, I'm telling you, man, this word is just as relevant today yeah. as it was 25 years ago, as it was 100 years ago, as it was 2,000 years ago when it was spoken. It is just as relevant today, yeah. and we need to be living by it. Yeah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm almost done. In verse 17, this Bible college is called In Christ International Bible College. And so one of the first courses that we go through in this uh, college is finding out what your identity and who your identity in Christ is. Come on, if you don't get that down first, none of these other things are going to make sense to you. And so this is one of those verses that each and every one of these students sitting here today had to memorize. And they had to write it out on one of their tests. Some of them skipped it because they didn't memorize it. I'm not going to mention any names, and I'm not even looking at them. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Come on. If, if you look at these people on, the, on these rows, you say, man, if they can do it, I surely can do it too, right? <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Look at this in verse 17. Therefore, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any person, say any person. Come on, that means everybody, right? This is, up, this is open to anybody. If any person is engrafted into Christ the Messiah, he's a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old and previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. Come on, somebody. This is something that when you get it on the inside of you, you realize that you're not the same person that started out the school two years ago. You're not the same person that started out the school last fall. Come on. You're a brand new creation. He goes on to say in verse 18, Now all things are of God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, receiving us in favor and brought us into harmony with himself. Aren't you thankful for what Jesus has done? Come on, he's brought us into harmony with, us, with himself. And then he's called us to the ministry of reconciliation. In verse 18, or 19 rather, he says that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. And he's committed us to that very same thing, to that ministry or to that word of re reconciliation. Verse 20, he says, now then, we are Christ's ambassadors. Yeah. God is making his appeal as if it was through us. So we, as Christ's personal representatives. Who just walked in? Oh, Jesus walked in. Bless the Lord. Nice to see you, Jesus. Come on, you are Christ's representative. Come on, you're not identified by all your nasty uh, uh, past, by all your sin, by all your failure. You need to learn how that, uh, and how the word says that you are identified with Christ. Yeah. You're his own personal representative, meaning that when you walk into the room, it's as if Jesus is there too. Yeah. Come on, Paul also said that we are uh, uh, the fragrance of Christ to God. Come on, when we walk into his presence, when we start to sing out praises, he said, look at Jesus. Look at all these little Jesuses just singing their praises out to me right now. Come on, he sees Jesus on you. In verse 20, he says, we are ambassadors. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled unto God. Now in verse 21, he says, now he has made him who knew no sin, which is Jesus, to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. <laughs> Come on, you are. You are the righteousness of God. 
you are the righteousness of God. You know, there's nothing that you can do to take away the righteousness of God. There's nothing that you can do to improve upon the righteousness of God. It is a perfect gift, and it's yours right now. The Wade translation says this about verse 17. He says, so if anyone becomes united with Christ, he's a fresh creation. The original conditions have passed away. Mark, they've been replaced by new conditions. I guarantee you that each of these students sitting here today would say that they are not the same person that they used to be. Come on, there's been a radical change on the inside of them. Amen. Amen. Come on, it's not just on the inside of them. You can see it on the outside even. They conduct themselves differently. They talk differently. Hopefully they smell a little different. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on, your, your identity now in Christ is not received by a sense knowledge. You know, so many people just say, well, I want to read this book and I want to read that book and I've just got to learn more about this. You know, Timothy said that there's people that are always learning but never coming to the truth. Come on, we ought not to be these people that are just always learning, always learning, always learning, and never coming to the truth. We need to be learning, but we also uh, 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 need to be receiving by revelation knowledge. Come on, when you receive this by revelation, everything that Paul received was by revelation. He saw Jesus on the road to Damascus, and he received abundant revelation. Come on. You know, we saw just a little glimpse of revelation that the disciples received, uh, you, know, you know, pretty much marking uh, uh, Peter when he said, uh, you are the son of God. You're the Messiah. Yeah. And Jesus said to him, well, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So he didn't get that by reading a book. He got that from being in God's presence. And so revelation comes when the eyes of your spirit are opened up. That's why we pray that every time before we get in the word, that the eyes of your heart or the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. Because I don't just want a bunch of people who know it in their head. I want them to know it in their knower. I want them to know it in their heart. Come on. Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. It's not out of the abundance of your head. It's out of the abundance of your heart. And so the Holy Spirit will transmit to you the things uh, of Christ right to your spirit. And if you go by head knowledge, you know what else you're going to go by? You're going to be uh, uh, moved by your emotion. You're going to be moved by your feeling. You know, there's days that I wake up and I don't feel saved. Was it because I did anything wrong? No, I just didn't feel saved that day. Some Sunday mornings especially. I just don't feel saved. <laughs> I just play it, you know, but you know, there's days y'all had some days where you just say, man, this is not a good day. Come on. Can you imagine if you went, your spiritual climate went by how you felt, we'd all just be a bunch of roller coasters up one day, down the other. We would not know. Uh, and, and, and people coming to us would not know what kind of Josh am I going to get today? Am I going to get a heightened Josh that is uh, angry about everything? Am I going to get a low Josh who doesn't want to talk about anything? Or I'm going to get that level headed one that I kind of wish that he'll be that way all the time. Come on. We, we, we need to get it in our spirit. We need to get it by revelation knowledge. And so when you go by head knowledge or your senses or your mental ascent, the word of God will lose its effectiveness and will lose its power. Isn't that amazing? So Paul, you know, he received this revelation and knowledge when he wrote to the Galatians in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. Come on, it's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ that's alive in me. He's saying, I've got a brand new identity. This is not the same Paul that you knew. This is not the same Saul that you knew. Everything on the inside of me has become different. Now, Jesus, you know, this, this, this passage of Scripture right there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is really a passage of substitution. Jesus became our substitute so that everything that he did, he did it to the credit of your account. He did it to the credit of your account. Now, this... I want to just charge the uh, students here, graduates, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. He says, I charge you therefore, Timothy, which he spoke, you know, Paul speaking to Timothy, but I'm going to speak this to you today. Before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Don't preach your feeling. 
Don't preach your emotion. Don't preach your opinion. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And look at this in verse 3. He says, for the time will come. I believe we're in this right now. That they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn away their ears from the truth. And they'll be turned aside to fables. He said, but you, young Timothy, you students, be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of the evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Today is not the end of something. You might think, well, this is the end of this, and now I'm going to go on to whatever. This is just the beginning of something. This is just the beginning. When Paul was talking to Timothy here and telling him about how people would not endure sound doctrine, he's not talking about the world. He's talking about the church. Well, a lot of times we look at these verses and we say, well, surely the world is not enduring sound doctrine. No, he's talking about people right in your very own church. There's some people that have strayed away from the word so far that they just say things like, well, you're just a chapter and verse type guy. Wow. Accused. I had that spoken to me one time, just in a real heated debate. It was very uncomfortable. He said, you're just a chapter and verse type guy. Well, forgive me for following the word of God. (laughs) Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) Come on, they, they will not endure sound doctrine. He's talking about people who have been in church for 50 plus years, 25 years, 10 years. People who are uh, leaders in the body of Christ that they will fall away from sound doctrine. That's why he encouraged him to preach the word. I believe that really in the essence of that verse, he's saying preach the word only. Don't add to it your two cents. Preach the word only. I like how the King James Bible says preach the word. Be instant. Be instant. How many of y'all like instant things? Come on. We're in an instant kind of world right now. You want instant potatoes. You want instant oatmeal. You want instant cream of wheat. You want instant tea. Come on. All these things that you get, they're instant. You just go and push something in there, add a little water, warm it up, and you you got whatever you're looking for. Instant. But he's saying, with your ministry gift, be instant. Be instant. Do the work of the evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. I'll close with this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. In the New King James Bible, he says, He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. The Amplified Bible says, Faithful is he who is calling you to himself and utterly trustworthy. He will also do it. He'll fulfill his call by haloing and by keeping you. The New Living says this, God will make this happen. For he who calls you is faithful. Finally, the Message Bible says, the one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to pray a blessing over these uh, graduates before we hand out their diplomas and their uh, uh, degrees. And uh, we're just going to stand on what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Students, would you stand up or graduate? I got to just call you graduates now. I'm just going to come down at your level here. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you for each and every one of these standing here today. I thank you, Lord, for the price that they've paid in these classes, the time that has been uh, uh, dedicated to studying your word. Father, I thank you that this is not in vain, 
that the Lord is building something on the inside of them. Psalms 127 verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the people labor in vain who build it. And so what God is building on the inside of you, it's going to come to a flourishing finish. He is doing something amazing in you. He started with laying that first brick of revelation on the inside of you, and he's going to lay brick upon brick upon brick upon brick. You're not done. You're not done. This is just the beginning of something special for you. Father, I thank you that they be rewarded for the things that they've done in secret, Lord God, that you'd reward them openly, Father. I thank you, Father, for their uh, 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 hunger for the word of God. What we've experienced in these Monday nights as, as we've grown closer together as believers, as we've grown, grown closer together as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for the plan that you have for each and every one of these here, Father. The vision that you have for them, Lord God. I ask God that you would speak to them and reveal to them the, the exact plans that you have for them. And I thank you, Lord. The Bible says that the righteous, uh, 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 the steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So, Father, I thank you as they take a new step in the ministry that you're meeting them right at that step father and you're already you've already prepared that next step for them after that step father I thank you Lord for their faithfulness I thank you Lord for uh, uh, for their encouragement to us uh, to be willing to learn to be willing to study but most importantly we give you the glory God we give you the honor God for everything that you've done in and through these students and that you'll continue to do in Jesus name amen Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, baby, you can come up on the stage with me. And uh, the first thing that we're going to give out here today is uh, the um, diplomas to the class of 2017. We never had a graduation for your class. And so this is what it says. I don't want to block your face too much. Praise the Lord. It says, In Christ International Bible College, upon recommendation of the faculty of Mark Hankins Ministries and Christian Worship Center, by the virtue of the authority vested in them, In Christ International Bible College hereby confers upon Gary Barman in the degree of the Diploma in Theology, with all rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appertaining in witness whereof the seal of the college and the signature of the duly authorized and are affixed below, dated this 19th day of August, 2018, and it's signed by Pastor Mark Hankins. So, Brother Gary, come on up here and receive. Bless the Lord. Congratulations. This is the same diploma, but this one says Jessica R. Brush. So come on up, Jess. Diploma in Theology. God bless you. The next one says, let's see here. Drum roll. No, I'm just kidding. Joy Pierce. Diploma in Theology. Congratulations. God bless you. And finally, uh, the end of the 2017 class, Devin C. Smullen, degree of diploma in theology. God bless you, man. Love you, brother. Proud of you. You may be seated. Now, for those of you who don't know, there's a couple of different options in this college. If you don't want an associate's degree and you just want to study uh, with the students, you can also do that. And you would get a, uh, I'll tell you what it says right now. It says that this would be a Bible Institute first year certificate in theology. So this is what it says. In Christ International Bible College upon the recommendation of the faculty of Mark Hankins Ministries by virtue of the author authority vested in them, In Christ International Bible College hereby confers upon Bobby Lindsay in the degree of Bible Institute first year certificate in theology with all rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appertaining in witness whereof the signatures of the duly authorized officer is affixed below, dated this 19th day of August, 2018. Praise the Lord. Give it up for Bobby. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, if you would like a certificate in theology, here's the deal. You just got to show up on Monday nights. You read the material and you don't even have to take tests. Praise the Lord. 
so the pressure is off and you can still get something for yourself. This one is a Bible Institute first year certificate in theology going to Mary Ann Reppenhagen. He did sign it. Yes, he did. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now, this is the graduating class now that we're honoring of 2018. Uh, this says, In Christ International Bible College, upon the recommendation of the faculty of Mark Hankins Ministries, by virtue of the authority vested in them, In Christ International Bible College hereby confers upon Justin Arnold the degree of Diploma in Theology. He says, with all rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appertaining in witness whereof the signature of the duly authorized officer, which is affixed below, dated this 19th day of August 2018. Justin Arnold has a diploma in theology. I bless you, brother. Love you, brother. Proud of you, man. And then, Justin's beautiful bride-to-be, Mary Emily Podwerney, come on up. This is the degree of diploma in theology. Congratulations. Great job. There you go. Give that, give that first year a hand. Now this says in Christ International Bible College right on the front. And this is for an associates in theology. You all remember what I read before? It says the same thing. <laughs> and this one is going to Brother Gary Barman, associates in theology. God bless you, brother. So proud of you. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> this is an associates in theology for Jessica R. Brush. Congratulations. You did it. This is an Associates in Theology for Miss Joy Pierce. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and finally, this is an Associates in Theology for Devin C. Smullen. Congratulations, man. Proud of you. you. Will you all give them one big round of applause, all the graduates? They have to stand up and do their tassels and throw their caps. Oh, you want to tell them to do that? Okay, class of 2018, it is now time for you to move your tassel and throw your hats. You are not prepared at all. Tassel, congratulations, class of 2018. You want to close the service? Praise God. You guys may be seated. It's nice to celebrate. The word says to honor where honor is due. Amen. Amen. So you say, why would we spend a, our Sunday morning service doing that? Because it deserves it. It deserves a place. And so we're just so thankful that you were all here this morning to be part of this with us. And don't get jealous. If you want to do it, do it too. Amen. Amen. You can do it. You're well able. You're well able. Maybe it's not this, but it's something else that the Lord, as you're faithful to him, he'll honor you. What you do in private, faithfully, the Lord will reward you in public. 
Amen. So it may not be a Bible college. It might be a business venture. It might be something different. But if you're going to do faithfully what the Lord's called you to do, he's going to reward you and honor you publicly just like this. Amen. We never want to leave a service any time without giving people an opportunity to know Jesus. You know, the reason that these people are so excited and dancing on the edge of the stage and they're their nice robes, these beautiful robes, um, is because they've get, gotten to know Jesus intimately. And not just as somebody up in the sky, but as a friend, as a brother, a savior, a comforter, a counselor, a teacher, a standby, amen. It's not a religion. It, it's the person of Jesus Christ, who the word says is now our brother. We're joint heirs together with Jesus Christ, anyone who's received him as Lord of their life. And just with every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, um, this is your decision this morning. Only you can make this choice. Nobody can make this choice for you, and it doesn't have to be a gamble. You don't have to say, well, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll do good enough things by the time I die that, you know, the Lord will know I'm a good person and he'll just take me in. The word says that you simply have to receive a free gift. By using your mouth and praying a prayer, you receive a free gift, and that gift changes your nature. You can't do enough good things to be righteous. You simply become righteous because Jesus is righteous, and you say, I'm going to receive the free gift of righteousness that Jesus paid the price for for me, and then God's going to come in, and he's going to change my nature, and he's going to call me a son or a daughter of God. And then you have the inside change, and then you get to start learning about how the outside's supposed to look. It's an inside-out transformation. You don't have to do anything to get that free gift except for simply receive it. And you receive it with the words of your mouth. So right now, in this very instant, you can make a decision that changes your eternity. It's more important than anybody you marry, where you work. It's more important than what house you live in, what state you live in how good your hair looks. <laughs> it is the most important decision you'll ever make in life, and it takes you 30 seconds to make, and it changes the course of eternity for you. If you haven't prayed that prayer or you don't know that if you died right now, heaven will be your home, I just want you to slip up your hand, and we're going to pray that prayer together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Nobody looking around. This is a, a decision between God and man. And you just have the courage to slip up your hand and pray this prayer so that your life would be changed forever. Amen? Or maybe you just say, I need to rededicate my life to God. I haven't been serving Him. I know Him, but I've, my, heart, my heart has been hard. And I haven't been listening to His voice, and I want to make a change. I want to make a decision to walk with Him, not just know that He's Lord. And if that's you, slip up your hand. We'll pray that prayer together this morning. Amen. Just let's repeat after me. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you that he died. He rose again for me. Thank you, God, for setting me free, filling me with your spirit, washing me white as snow, taking my life and doing something with it. I receive your perfect love, and I thank you for loving me. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.